So I'm going to talk about the uh, partnerships supporting transition to operations. So you heard a little bit about the partnerships that we've built to, uh, to the Environmental Modeling Center. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on the National Hurricane Center and our partnerships that we've had with them. And so at, they're right across, they're not across the street, they're uh, west from here. And we've had an enduring partnership with them. And we've been able to transition our, our research results, technology and observations to them. But it wasn't until the joint hurricane testbed that formed in 2001 that really formalized this process. It was the first ever testbed in NOAA research, uh, and it's been the poster child of, of testbeds. Uh, this has allowed us to test in their environment, and not only do we test at the National Hurricane Center, but also the EMC and the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. The majority of the funding for the joint hurricane testbed has been through the Office of Weather and Air Quality. Through the joint hurricane testbed, there's been 95 projects funded. Out of those 95, 27 have been HRD-led PI projects. And out of those 27, 21 have been accepted into a transition. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you a few of those projects that our HRD uh, scientists have been involved with. Starting with the Tropical Cyclone Genesis Index. It's a text product, but it essentially tells the forecaster what type of tropical wave and what percentage it is likely to uh, intensify into a, a tropical system. Another product that we have uh, uh, transitioned from the Hurricane Research Division has been to use the sea surface temperature as a predictor to the uh, statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme that was developed in, in partnership with with HRD and NHC that now is being run at the National Hurricane Center. Another one is looking at the inland wind decay model. Again, another, another research project that was developed here and now the scientists have included wind radii information to this uh, model that is being used at the Hurricane Center. And lastly, Jason Dunyan mentioned this, but we've also transitioned our targeting strategies. What, what areas of the atmosphere are very sensitive to observations and how we, we fly our G4 aircraft uh, in, to improve the track forecasts. So the beauty of the joint hurricane test, uh, test bed is that it allows this forecaster and research interaction. Here is a picture of, of uh, Gus Alaka working with some of the specialists. So not only do we get uh, the, the forecasters, uh, see some of the research uh, technologies that are being transferred, but the researchers can also interact with the forecasters as well. This, I was involved with the Joint Hurricane Testbed for about 15 years, and this really allowed us to see what kind of environment, the time constraints that they work with, and essentially the products that the public uh, uses to make informed decisions. So with that, um, the Weather Act was passed, and one of the emphasis of the Weather Act was risk communication. Again, still working with our partnerships, it kind of put an emphasis uh, to us in OAR, and especially AOML, on how we can improve the risk communication that ultimately our partners at the National Hurricane Center do. This is also an emphasis uh, for the, uh, that's also shown in the new strategic plan for the hurricane, uh, for HFIP. And so as was mentioned earlier, facets, is essentially a framework that we've adopted that modernizes the way that we communicate and we issue these types, not we per se, but our, our partners or forecasters, they issue this information. And how do you, how do you, how do you issue that information in a probabilistic way to inform and empower the, the public? So essentially, the, the way that we uh, deliver information, probabilities is not an exact, it's, it's not an easy thing for the public to brace. So we wanna make sure that they know how, you know, it, a hurricane making landfall is, or is not a black or white uh, or yes or no. We want people to embrace the grayness, to, to know that a probability is a shade of gray, if you will. So how do we communicate and convey that to, to the public? So facets, uh, really integrates social and behavioral and physical sciences. We are it's we have to look at the at, at the impact in a holistic manner. How the forecast uh, looks at their data, looks at the guidance, makes the decisions, puts out a forecast, as well as the public how they're educated, how they prepare, and how they're aware and their response. And this is happening in a continuum fashion as the hurricane in this case, the hazard is approaching and that forecast is changing. 
along with the National Hurricane Center, we uh, we are adopting their tropical so uh, tropical roadmap goal, which which is to clearly communicate some of the and build new actionable forecasts for the public and partners. An example that they uh, that uh, the Weather Service is using these these are called high threat impact graphics, which are impact based graphics. We want them to be scientifically sound easy to read and color coded. And so we've hired a postdoc that will be working with us at AOML to develop these types of things to, to work in concert with our university partners and the National Hurricane Center. 